Hey everybody, this is Scott and I'm doing an extra little video here because one of the cool little people who live in a little tiny GoPro box that sits on my desk, which is where it is tonight, uh, wanted me to do a little bit of an itinerary review for a trip uh, to Nicaragua, which is what I tend to know a little bit about. So uh, he has a couple of things. So it's going to be a quick trip. It's for about five days uh, with two people. And the only two absolute pin drops that must happen, the non-movable things, are uh, seeing the the at night, this is important, the open lava at the Masaya Volcano, definitely a should do in the country, uh, and volcano boarding, which for those who are not aware, happens here in Leon. You don't actually volcano board in the middle of the city, but all of the launching uh, tours for it are here in Leon. I would not talk to people anywhere else about it. There's lots of places that are gonna sell tours, but the tours are all from Leon. All the volcanoes for volcano boarding are right here at Cerro Negro. It's, it's really close to the city, um, so there's two really big volcano boarding groups here in the city, uh, and that's who you want to go with. They're the ones who do it every day. They know what they're doing. That's that, This is where it's done. So come to Leon and do the volcano boarding uh, from here. There's like, like, you could arrange it from Managua, but that's really silly, right? If you lived in Managua, yeah, different. But if you're like on vacation and you're coming to Leon, just come to Leon and go volcano boarding. All right. So their current plan is to start uh, the week on a Friday. Um, they're going to land at Managua Airport and do the drive to Leon. They're estimating one and a half to two hour drive. Well, okay. So I've done it in 75 minutes. I could do it in one hour if uh, um, I was being bad, but you shouldn't. And you want to allow more than two hours for this, um, partially because you're going to want to allow a bit of time just at the airport. You got to rent a car, do whatever. And that's if you're going to rent a car. Now, if you have a driver lined up, a taxi, that's what I would do. If I was heading out to Leon and I was going to do some stuff, I would have a private driver ready, hit me up. I can give you a, a Leo's number. He's freaking awesome, lives here. Um, and he would send someone out to get you. And it, it'll probably cost you about, I don't know, $120, $130. Maybe you'll get lucky. It'll be less because it's just a one way. But normally you get taken out at night or something because that's when the, the flights tend to come in. We'll see. Uh, but do that. Don't rent a car, at least if this is your only thing. Um, and then you can zip out to to Leon. Leon's a great place to start uh, here. Generally, we recommend Granada as a starting point, but if you're not worried about like acclimating to Spanish speaking culture or something, it doesn't really matter. Um, Leon is still a very accessible city and Nicaragua is a very gentle uh, country to move into. So even if you've never been to a Spanish speaking Latin American country or anything like that, Nicaragua should not, you know, uh, unless it's your absolute first time out of your home country, I wouldn't worry. Uh, and especially not if you're going to Leon, because there's still tourist infrastructure, for sure. It's just not Granada's the main one. Um, so coming here, doing the cathedral rooftop, yes, definitely do that. We have one of the coolest cathedrals in Latin America. It's got a cool story with it. It is a beautiful spot. You've got the, the cathedral right there. You've got a couple nice restaurants. You have all the little, like, shopping. The market, if you want to explore that, touches the cathedral on the east side, the plaza on the west. Uh, you got, you know, a lot of stuff to see within, say, a two-block walking area of the cathedral, you've got like this real historic downtown. So that's perfect. Yeah, start there. Uh, Saturdays, looking at doing um, the market, which is by the cathedral, just exploring the city, the things I said, um, and then saving for the evening, volcano boarding. Uh, yes, I mean, and by evening, it's it's pretty early in the afternoon. Um, they start at between one and two o'clock. Definitely hit up Bigfoot, do the party bus, do their whole thing. Uh, I don't know what they do on different days, but definitely on certain days, they take you out to the beach, they head out to Las Benitas, they go to uh, either the pub crawl or the Tuesday simple party or or stuff like that, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So you end up with all the people, you go volcano boarding, you get exhausted, you get dirty, you get hot, and you're like, Ugh, I need beer and dancing. So that's what they do, and it's like a whole big fun thing, and it's a lot of backpackers, but it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of people from everywhere, and a lot of Nicaraguans don't do the volcano boarding, but they go to the parties too. So you have just a lot of people there, a lot of stuff going on, and it's it's a good fun time, and uh, and people love the volcano boarding. My wife's done the volcano boarding, my eldest daughter, who's now 15, did it when she was 13, they had a good time. Um, Sunday, uh, two hour drive to Granada. This is not going to happen. <laughs> One, unless you're driving like an absolute maniac, you cannot get between Leon and Granada in two hours, even in the middle of the night. On Sunday, you typically have pretty heavy traffic. So a lot three to four hours for that drive. It's not a bad drive. The traffic will be a little bit annoying, but just because it's slow, not because it's like frustrating, unless slow is also frustrating to you like it is for my wife, uh, then you'll be fine. Just give yourself a little bit more time. He said, maybe do the Chocolate Museo. Yeah, the Chocolate Museo is a fun little museum. Um, you've maybe seen it on my channel or on my Flickr feed. We did it in 2019. 
certainly not a showstopper. I would not prioritize that. Uh, but if you have a chance to do it, I used to live right by it, by the way. So if you're standing at the Chaco Museo, look to your right about three blocks up and to the left. It's where I used to live when I first came to Nicaragua. Uh, he said, maybe the Isletas de Granada. I would say definitely the Isletas de, de Granada. The Chaco Museo, first of all, is a chain. It exists in like six different uh, countries. And it'll be, you can always go do it somewhere else. You can look up the information. It is fun. I wouldn't skip it. If you have time in Granada, certainly do the Chaco Museo. Go support them. Great thing. But it's not unique. The Isletas is unique, which is they take a boat out, there's 365 islands, uh, and you go visit it and they show, oh, here's some rich people where they live, here's some fishermen, here's like some history. It's cool, right? And it's unique. So definitely do that if you can. But he also mentions maybe uh, Laguna de Apoyo. <laughs> he, he writes it differently. Uh, Laguna de Apoyo, I would say you actually want to do on your way to uh, Granada, not go to Granada and come back to Laguna de Apoyo. And to do Laguna de Apoyo, I feel the way to do it is you show up in the late afternoon, maybe between three and four. Uh, so if you're coming from Leon, this would work. Go directly to Laguna de Apoyo. Do uh, so. What Laguna de Apoyo is? It's a volcano. It's the one next to Masaya, all right. So Masaya and Apoyo are volcanoes next to each other, but no one refers it to it because it's not an active volcano. But that's what it is. And so you go. You can't stay on Masaya. That's just open lava. But Apoyo is a a volcanic lake high in the air, and it is absolutely fantastic. It's one of the best things you can do in Nicaragua. It's one of the best things you can do in the world. Do it. <laughs> like I, 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 you may think I'm overselling it, and then you're going to get there and be like, "Why did Scott not push this harder?" Okay, that's that's what we're talking about here. So this is fantastic. Um, you go up; it's a beautiful drive through the surrounding area. It's great. You crest the top of the volcano. You go down and stay at some place like the Hostel Paradiso. They're fantastic. There's a there's a couple good places down there. It's not a ton. Like it's a very remote area. Um, but I always stay at Paradiso. They, they do a great job. There's always a bit of stuff going on. And the thing to do at Laguna de Apoyo is basically have a drink, get some food, and stare at the insane views. I mean, insane. It's amazing. Uh, and, and then you want to stay there at night because it's so tranquil. It's so, it's kind of like a reverse Ometepe, which we'll get to in a second. So it's, it's a ring of things around this, this completely silent lake and there's just nothing like it. And you got to check it out. And I can't explain it very well because of what it is. It's just hard, but you don't want to spend a ton of time there, but you want to spend the night. So it's part of the thing. You want to go to it. It's on the way from Leon to Granada, basically like it's a little bit out of the way, not much. And, uh, but it's before Granada. And it has views of Granada. It has views of Laguna uh, Nicaragua beyond Granada. So it's pretty cool. So what you want to do is spend an evening there. Be real chill. Hang out. Sleep. Get up. Get up early. The sunrise is breathtaking. It's amazing. And take your camera for sure. Um, and uh, enjoy breakfast. Relax. And then once the day's going, once you're, oh, okay, now it's time to check out. Then head on to Granada. If you need to save a little bit of time, Laguna de Apoyo is very close to the Volcano Messiah. I have only ever done the Volcano Messiah from staying in Laguna de Apoyo. So that's how I do it, right? Just leave uh, the Laguna and you can take a taxi or if you're driving, it's, it's pretty easy. Drive to Messiah, which is one volcano over and you go there at night, but don't wait too late. Check with uh, the people at your hostel or your hotel on Laguna de Apoyo, how late should you leave? You basically want to get there right as the sun is setting because you want it, you do want to be there in the total darkness, but you can wait, but they don't stay open. It's a park very late. So like, if you're like, I'm going to wait till 11 to go, no, there's no way. I think they close between seven and nine probably between eight and nine, but don't take your chances. You, cause you want to get at least 30 minutes there. It is amazing. Nothing else is like it. Um, there's not very many places where you can see a constant open volcano. So definitely, definitely do like, you've got great itinerary items, but you can optimize them a little bit here. Um, and prioritize. Like uh, I get like when you haven't been there, looking at the open lava seems like the big thing and Laguna de Apoyo seems like a nice little extra. It's the other way around. Trust me. But you can do them together and then you'll be at, at Laguna de Apoyo and be like, this is so relaxing, but I kind of want to do something. I can go see the volcano. Go do that. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. I'm all pumped up from seeing the volcano. Now I can go enjoy a cocktail sitting by this absolutely mind-blowing serene lake inside another volcano. And it's like the volcano adventure. And if for some reason you're in Laguna de Apoyo and you're just itching to do something, 
you can take a taxi to Granada. It's not that far. Go do lots of restaurants and come back super late at night. I've done that before too. For people who live here, uh, if you have any amount of money, like if you're super poor, people never see a Pollo. But once you have enough money to go there, you have a tendency to use it on a regular basis because it's so beautiful. So we all know the hotels we go in and out. Uh, so that's what I would do. I would actually hit that and then not do Granada until the next day. Now, the original itinerary, and this is what really made me want to make the video, is uh, this person had mentioned going to see Ometepe, but they had trepidation because they had heard there were some problems with the ferry and their flight out is on, uh, the, on the Wednesday. So this would be Monday going to Ometepe, they'd have Tuesday there, and then Wednesday they got to travel back home. That is a terrible idea, and I just made a short on this, but I'll do a little bit more. Ometepe is fantastic, and it's just like Laguna de Apoyo. It's this, how can you come to Nicaragua and not see Ometepe? But it's a tropical island, hours from shore, in the middle of a giant lake, in the middle of nowhere, and while it does have 50,000 people on it, it is remote. It's like Gilligan's Island. It's a three-hour tour, and you may end up stranded. For real, right? So all the time people go out and find that the ferry has motor problems, the ferries are sold out, the wind has picked up and the ferries can't run, the water level in the lake is too low, so some of the ferries can't run, so they're at lower ferry capacity. The airport was no longer needed, so they shut it down, so that's not there anymore. Basically, the ferry to San Jorge is the only path in and out of the island anymore. If there was a true emergency, they would find ways to get people out. Like, it's not like they would do nothing. The airfield could be opened for military flights if it had to be. Helicopters can go if they have to. There are other types of boats that carry many fewer people that could start running. But they'd be like hiring fishermen to run their fishing boats out across the lake. But you don't want to do it because the waves get really nasty. It's a giant lake. Like, it's truly a giant lake. So it has a lot of that ocean feel with, like, big waves and rough waters at times. So the ferries are fairly large, and they carry cars and stuff. Uh, so what that means is you cannot do a trip to Ometepe as the final thing on your itinerary. I don't mean to scare anyone off from it. Do Ometepe. <laughs> like, don't rule it out. Just you gotta, you got to leave more time in your itinerary for it, and you have to uh, treat it as a dangerous thing, danger to your itinerary, not to your bodily uh, harm type thing. Uh, and, I, you know, for those who have been watching my show for a while, Kat, when she was here, she decided to go to Ometepe alone, which is cool. Like, she was being like the, the you know, mature backpacker type thing. She went out there and ran into a few problems. She was there during a storm. She didn't accommodate uh, cash and stuff. She ended up on an island that had no cell service, no phone service, because when they lose their connection to the mainland, they lose cell service too, because everything trunks back to the mainland, because they're really remote. Uh, so if they lose power, they lose internet, you're offline. If you don't think about that, that means there's no way to use a credit card and there's no way to use an ATM. You're on a cash-only island. And for those who have seen my episodes about cryptocurrency, it means you can't use Bitcoin or anything like that. You are useless. This is one of the reasons why cash is king in countries like Nicaragua, because we have remote areas where people may not even have electricity. Not because it doesn't exist out there, because they don't bother to have it. They don't have any equipment to talk to anybody, because you're in just dirt on the side of the road dealing with stuff, right? So, because uh, it could be a stand. It could be a lean-to on the side of the road selling fruit. They don't have a way to do a bunch of electronic data transfer necessarily. So, when you're out on Ometepe, you have to be prepared that being cut off from Nicaragua could happen. So, this is this is just an adventure area. You can, same thing would happen on on a mountaintop somewhere in the US, right? In this case, it's just an island instead of a mountain, but the same kind of remote cutoff problems certainly could exist. So accommodate for that. You need to allow yourself at least, I would say, two days of buffer to be really safe before you're gonna do a flight uh, from going to Ometepe. So leaving it for the last days of a trip, no. Um, I, I just, I, I would feel very nervous the whole time. You'd, you'd ruin your trip because you'd be like, I'm so worried I'm not gonna make it back for my flight. Now, if you're just, you know, loosely traveling out by bus and you haven't got your tickets yet, yeah, whatever. But um, if you're actually dependent on a schedule, I don't see it as a, as a good way to go. So instead, what I would do, because they allowed some time on their on their thing for Ometepe, is do uh, the trip to Laguna de Apoyo. Use a day for that and get the volcano in on that day. Then when you get up the next day, go on to Granada and use the time that was allotted for Ometepe, part of it to get more in Apoyo, uh, and then the rest of it to really expand Granada. Granada is the, the tourist hub of the country, and so you're going to get a different experience in Leon for sure. Definitely do the Isletas. Definitely do that museum. Check out a few other museums. Do a tour of some of the uh, the churches. Maybe not an official tour. Just walk around. Um, this wasn't on the list. Definitely do the horse-drawn carriage ride. That only takes like an hour. 
you haven't done Granada if you haven't done the horse-drawn carriage ride, and you need to do the Calzada at night. That is the big pedestrian walkway that goes from the cathedral in the west to the waterfront in the east. When I lived there in 2015, that was cool, but it wasn't like epic. Now, it's like epic. They've got brand new tile art displays in the middle of the walkways. They have water fountains and beautiful parks and all kinds of stuff that wasn't there before. And there are way more bars, way more restaurants than there used to be. So go through there and, and you'll probably want to spend two nights hanging out in Granada. And then when you're in Granada and it's time for your flight, it's really easy to get a shuttle or a taxi from Granada back to the airport. It's basically one road more. It's not really, it's more than that, but it's really an easy drive from there back to the airport. And you can have a lot of confidence that you're in a spot where you're gonna get back to the airport easily. So I think by making that change, it's gonna suck by missing Ometepe. And I'm really sorry that you can't do that on this trip, but it's going to give you um, a far less time doing logistics, right? Because if you go to Ometepe, it's going to be a drive way down to Rivas, then to San Jorge. Then you're going to take the ferry from San Jorge. You're going to get around the island to where you want to go. And then you got to do all the way back with all the worry that you're going to miss things and all the scheduling you got to do because of the ferry schedule. Eliminate that. It's not worth it. You're going to get a longer trip by, by cutting out the logistics. You're going to get a more relaxed trip. You're not going to worry about those things. And you're going to get way more time in places with loads of things to do. And I think you're going to overall have a lot more fun with the whole thing. And if you're looking at getting bored in Granada for some reason, we can come up with a lot of tourist things or fun things for tourists to do in Granada uh, pretty easily. It's a, it's a decent sized city with a lot going on. And if nothing else, you can visit the house that I used to live in. It's like a, a pilgrimage site for uh, expats moving to Nicaragua. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. I will see all of you tomorrow.